Now let's head to outer space. China says it will send its next spacecraft, Shengao-22, to its Tiangong space station ahead of schedule. It's being sent unmanned, but with supplies for the current three-man crew aboard the station. The decision comes after space debris damaged the Shengao-20 capsule, forcing its crew to stay in space an extra nine days beyond their standard six-month rotation. In the end, the crew returned in the Shengao-21 spacecraft, but that left the trio of newly arrived astronauts without a means of getting home in the event of an emergency. To talk more about China's space program, we can bring in Ling Xin, a science journalist at the South China Morning Post. Ling, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, um, Ling, right there was a pretty dramatic moment for the Chinese astronauts. Uh, we saw on social media there were some calls for Elon Musk's SpaceX to rescue the astronauts. What does this incident tell us about the challenges associated with these missions? Yeah, so uh, as we all know, space debris has becoming an increasingly dangerous problem uh, for you know, especially low Earth orbit missions. Um, so uh, as we have been seeing with the Chinese astronauts, uh, most of the work they do when they are on spacewalks uh, outside Tiangong is to install shields um, just to prevent, um, you know, being hit by those really, really tiny um, debris uh, that are basically impossible de to detect or, or, or like they wouldn't even have enough time to to avoid. Um, yeah, so it's been um, the the outer space has become more and more crowded and um, it has been posing a significant uh, challenge to uh, Tiangong Space Station and the International Space Station uh, big uh, in structures like that. Right. This is this is a problem that's that's not just related to China's space program. This this is a problem that that's for everybody out in outer space. Is this a potential area where China could cooperate with the other space programs um, as a way to make sure that all of their astronauts that are in space stay safe? Yeah. Um, the um, especially the com. Um, Private companies. There are several private companies uh, in China are developing technologies uh, to clear up um, space debris. Um, and uh, China is always actually very open to um, collaboration with other countries in space. Um, but due to historic um, and geopolitical tensions, um, collaboration um, has not. Being, uh, they haven't been able to collaborate as much as they want. Now, uh, as you mentioned there, yes, NASA cannot cooperate with uh, China's space program. Um, uh, one of the reasons is because it's the military that runs uh, China's space program. Has this lack of cooperation hurt China's space program going forward? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the ban you just mentioned, it's actually from the U.S. side. It was pro the proposed in um, about more than 10 years ago by a Republican um, po politician from Virginia. It's called uh, the Wolf Amendment. So uh, NASA is banned to work with China um, or any organization affiliated with the uh, Chinese government. Um, that being said, China has been working uh, extensively with uh, European countries, um, both at uh, the ESA level and also national level. Uh, for instance, China has landed multiple instruments from Europe uh, on their robotic moon missions. Um, now, um, yeah, no, as, you were, as you were mentioning there about the, some of the advances that the China's space program has had, they're also looking to go to the moon. So uh, what more can you tell us about, uh, you know, the achievements to, to get them there and, and any challenges that are facing the program? Yeah, actually, China is, um, first of all, we need to mention that it's quite impressive uh, for China to have been doing their moon programs with all these robotic missions with zero failure rate. 
they never failed. OK, and then next year they are going to send their seventh mission uh, to the moon, which is very which will be very close to the South Pole uh, where people think uh, water ice. Uh, might be there, which you know, if if you're going to stay there for long term, you can use the water ice for oxygen or even rocket fuel. Um, so that's what they are going to do next year, and and there will be a European instrument on that mission as well. And then uh, China is also looking to build a moon base uh, near the South Pole with uh, other countries. Uh, and also, China has been moving really on track to uh, land human beings on the moon uh, before 2030. Ling, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise. That's Ling Xin, a science journalist at the South China Morning Post. And that's it. For